I'm not going to say top of the morning to a ladies. Everyone says that. Hi friends of cocktails, St. Patrick's Day is coming up, so we'll make three Irish cocktails. Whether you celebrate St. Patrick's Day or not, these three cocktails featuring Irish whiskey are so good you'll want to celebrate the Emerald Isle in one way or another. Or you can enjoy them through the whole day. Just make sure that you wear something green, so the leprechauns won't see you. Hey! I have green socks! You might just get pinched without wearing something green. Let the shenanigans begin. It's cocktail time. St. Patrick's Day is a celebration all over Ireland and everywhere else in the world where Irish people or their descendants live. What started as a day to commemorate St. Patrick and the arrival of Christianity to Ireland has grown into celebrations including parades, festivals and parties and the wearing of green attire or shamrocks. In its core, it celebrates the heritage and culture of Ireland and its people. And Irish whiskey is the pride of both. We'll use a special release of Jameson Irish whiskey, which was established in 1780 by John Jameson. The Black Barrel is a triple distilled blend of rich pot steel and grain whiskey that is matured in a mixture of sherry casks and bourbon barrels, which have been, as they say, reawakened for another level of smoothness. Unlike the rest of the Jameson range, the bourbon barrels undergo an additional charring to reveal a deep richness and complexity. This produces a whisky with an even richer flavor and bolder character. Just like with any Jameson bottle, the family motto Sine Meto, meaning without fear, is proudly displayed on the front of Black Barrel as well. And to start the celebration, I suggest we start in the morning with the classic Irish coffee. And for that, you'll also need some rich syrup, I made mine with the Marara sugar, some cream and, of course, coffee. And while I'll make my coffee in this Chemex lookalike, you can make yours the way you like it. But you're gonna need more than just an espresso. Whenever you're making filter coffee, make sure to rinse the filter with hot water. This will remove any paper odors and taste and make your brew taste a lot better. It also warms up your vessel so that your brew doesn't lose much temperature. We'll also warm up the glass for the Irish coffee. This will prevent the cocktail from getting cold too fast. I'll use 20 grams of ground coffee and we'll pour 60 grams of water over that. Gently swirl and let it bloom for around 45 seconds. After that, we'll add an additional 270 grams of water. If you like a stronger coffee, you can of course add more coffee to start with. I'm using India Ratnagiri, specialty coffee from India. I got it from a local coffee roaster and shop, and it's phenomenal. Whenever possible, support your local coffee shops and baristas, and you'll enjoy a well-made coffee every time. After a couple of minutes, your coffee will be ready. And it will look absolutely stunning in this coffee maker. Irish coffee is so much more than a store-bought Irish cream liqueur or many other products with the same name. While this is a simple build of whiskey, sugar, coffee and topped with cream, it can be incredibly good when made the right way, with quality ingredients. Jameson Black Barrel will leave our Irish coffee stronger woody and nutty notes with butterscotch, vanilla and some extra spice which will make sure to complement with a little grating of nutmeg on top. The cream has to be slightly whipped to float on top, but not too much, so that you're still able to easily drink the coffee through it. This way, you'll get the wonderful experience of flavors and textures mixing on your palate. If you want to go all out on green, you could add some matcha on top for that extra protection from the leprechauns. But flavor-wise, nutmeg will be perfect. So even though this is not green, it's a great way to start St. Paddy's Day. Ringo bra! Make sure you take a big enough for a sip to get a coffee through the cream and your taste buds will thank you for it. It's a sweet and creamy but strong coffee with a Jameson smoothness providing a spicy addition of wood and vanilla, complemented by the dark chocolate notes from the coffee. The warm sensation will travel to the back of your throat, down to your chest and throughout your body 
as your palate still enjoys the lingering combination of coffee and woody whiskey aftertaste. And when you think of the cool, damp, cloudy and rainy Irish weather, this is just what you'd want in your hand. After your morning Irish coffee, it's almost time for Elevenses. I'm pretty sure you've heard that name before. Don't think he knows about second breakfast, Pip. What about Elevenses? The name for this cocktail comes from a short break that is taken at around 11 am to enjoy drink or snack. While some enjoy tea, others drink whiskey. We will combine both. So you'll need your Irish whiskey and some strong brewed Irish breakfast tea. It's a bit more robust than English breakfast, but in a pinch that would work too. Some lemon and raspberry jam. Since this is homemade and not very sweet, I'll add a bar spoon of rich demerara syrup to balance the cocktail. Whiskey, tea, jam, I think we're ready for the elevenses. This cocktail was created by Jen Meyer, a global brand ambassador, with another Irish whiskey. But the Jameson Black Barrel will be perfect to stand up to the strong Irish tea notes, thanks to the double charred barrels that give it extra flavor. Irish breakfast tea is a blend of black teas with a strong Asan component, giving it a slightly malty flavor. To make it strong enough for this cocktail, I steeped 5 grams of tea in 200 milliliters of water for 30 minutes. Next thing we'll add is jam. This will complement the tea and keep with the whole Irish brunch theme. Raspberry works great, but you can experiment with your favorites. We'll balance that with some lemon and rich syrup. Take into account the tartness and sweetness of the jam when balancing the cocktail. And just like the Irish like to take some time off at 11 am to enjoy their favorite sip and bite to eat, it is important for you to know when to take some time off as well. And March 17th is a great day to do that. Take one of the recipes you'll see today, share them with your friends and enjoy your St. Paddy's time off. But if you follow today's episode, you'll be saying, kiss me, I'm Irish, by lunchtime. Let's try this celebration of tea time. This tastes like a grown-up iced tea. The sweetness from the jam and the syrup balances the bitter tea and the lemon in a wonderful way, with the fruity notes standing out without being overpowering. The Irish whiskey works like a delicious slice of bread for a good jam. It's the foundation on which other flavors can get to their full potential. And since we didn't double strain, you'll get some small pieces from the jam into the cocktail, which just enriches the drinking experience. And for the last cocktail of the day, something nice after lunch or dinner, we'll make an Irish Old Fashioned. And here's what you need. The black barrel will of course be the base, but instead of simple syrup, we'll use Benedictine herbal liqueur. For bitters, we'll use both. Angostura and orange bitters. This will be the second time I make an Irish twist on an old fashioned. I'll leave you a link to my stout fashioned I made with Jamison Caskmates and Guinness beer. This cocktail was created by Jack McGarry, Irish bartender and co founder of the Dead Rabbit in New York. Using Benedictine in an old fashioned twist adds enough sweetness, but the addition of herbal notes set this cocktail apart from the original. This will pair nicely with the black barrel, since the base is a higher than usual proportion of Jameson pot steel whiskey, aged to around 12 years instead of the normal 5 to 7 years in bourbon and sherry casks, that gives enhanced spice, nutty notes, vanilla sweetness and sherry fruit. The classic old fashion is an American invention, which makes this Irish twist a perfect drink on a holiday that has been influenced greatly by the American Irish population. The first St. Patrick's Day parade in Ireland was held in Waterford in 1903, 166 years after the first ever St. Patrick's Day parade in Boston. Organizing parades, eating corned beef and cabbage, and even wearing green 
and pinching are some of many holiday traditions started by the Irish immigrants in the US. Also, St. Patrick's original color was blue. Let's give this Irish old fashioned a try. Here's to a long life and a merry one. Even the classic citrus aroma is accompanied by the herbal notes from the liqueur. The smoothness that the Jameson is known for really shines in this cocktail, with all of the flavors providing a rich and long evolution on the palate, and with a stronger woody and herbal notes, all of the ingredients are wonderfully combined and balanced, to make a unique twist on the classic, and a perfect drink to finish off this year's Irish celebration. And that's it for today, I really hope that you'll try at least one of these cocktails, and even if you be Irish just for a day. I wish you a happy Shamrock Day! Slancha! This is the end of the video. If you want to see more cocktail recipes and more bloopers, check this out. And think about subscribing. Thanks for watching.